Hi there. So we continue our discussion with exploring the transistor circuits, specifically the BJT operating as an amplifier. And what you see on the screen is your common emitter mode circuit. And this is a circuit with little adjustment in as compared to our previous circuit. So our previous circuit did not have this resistor RE and we call it as an emitter degeneration resistor. Let me write here, emitter D generation register. So it's basically adds up to the circuit, uh, providing overall uh, increased linearity and the stability uh, for the circuit. And the important thing is that with the addition of your RE, your gain, V over over V V over O V in was uh, given as G M times R C divided by G M times R E plus one. It was approximated to the R C over R E, and uh, therefore we said that the gain is dependent on the ratio of the resistors R C and the R E. Unlike its previous version, where the gain was Without the addition of RE, the gain was uh, proportional to, this is like a negative RC over RE, and this is a negative GM over RC. And here in the previous case, the gain was minus GM times RC. So this is a small signal equivalent H uh, hybrid pi, uh, hybrid pi, uh, small signal equivalent socket for this uh, transistor based circuit. Okay, so what you see, of course, you have the collector, base, and the emitter of the transistor. And then you have these uh, N, then you have this P, and this is your N. So here is your base terminal, your emitter terminal, and this is your collector terminal. And the circuit is configured as a common mode, common emitter mode amplifier. So what you see from emitter to the ground, there is a resistor RE. From base to emitter, there is a base current IB uh, that is opposed by the base resistance uh, modeled as R5. And the voltage drop across the base emitter junction is small VBE. And this is your collector current IC, which is a product of GM times VBE. And uh, this current, now uh, we see that this is a current IE actually. So IE is equal to sum of IB plus IC. You see this current is coming this way, this current is coming and they are being summed IB plus IC. Now, uh, this current also flows through the parallel combination of RC and RO. So RO is huge. Uh, the BJT offers a very high input impedance and RC in comparison to that is just 100 ohm. So equivalent resistance is uh, approximately equal to RC. So we'll say that the VO is also written as uh, minus IC times RC, which is minus GM times uh, VBE times RC and therefore VO over VBE is minus GM times RC. Uh, if we if we do that, but uh, this is the this is not the gain uh, because of the addition of the RE, it will have a different value. Okay, so we are going to see that expression right now. How we can uh, do that? Right. So uh, write in the comment box and uh, tell me that uh, how this equivalent circuit uh, can uh, come to the conclusion of uh, expression of the gain as shown over here. It should, the gain should be a uh, product of uh, the ratio of the two resistors uh, approximately and exactly this is the form. So just uh, try to apply your basic uh, circuit laws and the equations to do that. Now the aim of the circuit is to show you how we can perform the uh, small signal analysis of this circuit, AC, uh, AC response. Uh, for that, we need to simulate, or it's also called as uh, frequency response. And we are going to simulate the Bode plot 
for this circuit. So the gain is RC over RE, negative of that. And that is, uh, let's say, 100 value divided by 10. The RC is 100. RE is also 100. So it's about 1. So magnitude of the gain will be 1. And you take a 20 log of uh, 1 is equal to 0 decibel. So approximately, you should have that one. Right. So what I have done here, you can see to run the transient, uh, we have covered the transient and the operating point analysis. So right click the voltage source. And I know that the DC bias value for the circuit is 0 0.7. So please refer to the earlier versions of the videos where we have explained you how to do the operating point analysis to understand the DC bias points of the circuits. And also, uh, see how we have done the time domain analysis, like we apply sinusoidal input and you get the inverted sinusoidal output with a gain. So for AC analysis, I keep the DC bias point as it is 0 0.7. Right now, I will just introduce a small signal uh, AC voltage source. So that is of having the value of 1. Phase, I will leave it uh, empty. And uh, that's how you do it. So you select none here, then click OK. After that, your values of the resistors and everything is set. You have a DC 5 volt uh, voltage source which is coming right here. You can just highlight, right click and highlight the net to see the connection between this net and this net. Transient analysis has been disabled by this uh, particular uh, this, uh, this particular symbol. Okay, and AC analysis has been introduced. So right click on the AC. So what I have done, I chose the AC, AC analysis right here. Then I selected the uh, number of points per decade to be 1000. I will start with the frequency one and the stop frequency is about 100 mega. So we'll click OK. And that's how this syntax right here came. Then once that is done, I am all set to run the analysis. So before that, I want to take you back to the original circuit also. The original circuit is right here without the addition of the RE. Okay, let me just uh, see here. And here, the gain of the circuit will be different, not the one. We'll uh, just try to see what the gain is here. So what I'll do, I will just uh, clean this and right now. So this circuit is without RE. Okay, it's simple, but rest of the things are same. As you can see, there is a DC bias point of 0 0.7 volt. Transistor is the same. Supply voltage is of 5 volt. We are running the AC analysis and the uh, output is taken from the collector. So the gain of this circuit would be VO over V in is minus GM times RC. And uh, value of GM is capital IC over VT or it's also small signal analysis like this. VC is equal to zero. So that's how, so IC is the DC bias current value, which is the thermal voltage. So we can calculate that much, all right? And uh, uh, we have done that. Uh, so we'll see how much is the gain for this circuit. So before that, we need to calculate the operating point and all these things. So from the previous video, we have calculated the operating point. From that, we get the value of IC, uh, right? And then, yeah. Uh, or maybe we can also write the expression here, the VO, which is VCE, okay? This is V plus minus ICRC. So we know the V plus, we know the RC, so VO will be like uh, 5 volt, which is the supply voltage divided by, uh, not divided, VO equal to 5 minus IC times 100. 100 is the RC. So output, we don't know how much it is. So of course, we can't really get to know what is the value of IC here. So best way is to simulate and just keep adjusting until your desired condition is met. Okay, so this is the circuit and we have run, we are going to run the AC analysis for this circuit also. So let's do that. 
So what I'll do, I will just click OK and uh, tile the windows. So now two windows are shown right here. One, the bottom one is your circuit with emitter register and upper one circuit without an emitter resistance. OK, uh, let me why why the nets are highlighted. We don't want that. So let's do that. Just clear all the drawings and we'll see that how we can do that. So first circuit will run the AC analysis for the top circuit. That is the simple common emitter circuit. And we'll see what's the what's the symbol like. So here we click the output. And on the y-axis, you have a gain of 33 decibel, uh, 33 dB. And uh, the gain is constant in the uh, dotted, uh, in the in the clean, uh, the dark one, the green curve. And uh, there is a minus 3 dB point is about, uh, is, is very less actually. Minus 3 dB is about 30. We don't see the minus 3 dB point, but the gain starts dropping from here. So maybe we need to increase the frequency here. Maybe let's say 1000 mega, that is 1 giga perhaps. Uh, here you can see the 3 dB point. So gain is 33 dB at DC and uh, 30 dB would be somewhere here. So at about 200 megahertz, you have a minus 3 dB point. Let me draw it here in a better way. So this is like your minus 3 dB point. Let me draw it in a, in a good way. So that's your minus 3 dB point. And that's the frequency here is about F equal to 200 megahertz. So that's coming from the pole, the first pole, uh, which is tau equal to R times C. Okay, and the frequency is about uh, one over tau. That is the time constant being introduced for this circuit. And the phase is like, uh, starts from 180 degree at zero and uh, at zero frequency, and then it rolls off to minus six, uh, plus 60 degree. So there is a positive phase shift all the way, but till uh, your minus three dB point, your phase is about 180 degree, or even just up to 100 megahertz, your phase is constant. That is one, output is 180 degree phase shifted. So you have a positive input and you have output like this. So there is a phase shift. So how about we see, right click the Y axis and choose a linear. So that's a body plot. And see your gain is like 44 volt. Uh, your gain is like 44 volt, 44 something like that so it's a pretty high gain that you see here why it is 44 volt uh, that is something you have to understand as I, I don't think uh, you have to have the 44 volt let me check that out Right, so what we mean by that, the output is at DC, your output is 44 times or 45 times, or let me see precisely, 48 times higher than the input volt, right? So that it means. And this uh, 48 times gain continues till the frequency of about 100 megahertz thereafter the gain drops uh, minus 20 dB per decade, uh, yeah, like that. However, uh, it's time now to simulate this circuit, this part of the circuit where we have the addition of the emitter registers. So what I do, I will tile the windows again, and this is the response for this circuit and the upper circuit we are going to simulate. So now we have the same uh, circuit, same configuration, just run the analysis for the top circuit. So on the right, you see, uh, circuit and its frequency response. On the left, you see right here, and now the red probe prompts me to plot the waveform. So I click here, and you see I have a gain of minus 2.4 dB, 
and if you remember for the theory, the gain was one because RC and RE values were chosen to be same. So theoretical gain was one uh, and in terms of uh, dV, it was zero dV. So it is minus 2.4. So not exact, but still close. Linear Y, we see that it's about like 763 millivolts. So uh, output is like uh, 0.7 times the input. But what about now? And theoretically, output was same as input. But how about I just now choose the value of 100 and RE is now the gain is 10 because the ratio of RC over RE is the gain of this circuit. So 20 log 10 is uh, 40 dB. Uh, let me check. 20 log 1 is 0 dB and uh, 20 log 10 is 20 dB. So we'll simulate that. We'll see that. So, so theoretically the gain is 10 times and simulation wise the gain is 6 times higher. So it says that 5.94 from DC up to 10 megahertz and like that you need to increase that to see the 3 dB points. So let me just right click here and instead of 100 mega, I'll have one giga, for example, then you see the 3 dB point precisely. Now you see that here. So gain is about six times in simulation. Right click, choose decibel. You have like uh, 15 point something, almost 16 dB gain. And uh, theoretically, we calculate it to be 20 dB. So pretty close to what we expect. Now, here is your gain constant up to 100 megahertz. And after that, at your, for example, where is about 16 here and 13. So it's about 200 hertz right here, this point. Let me take this somewhere. Ah, okay. So 3 dB point will be around here, minus 3 dB point. And that frequency is about 300 megahertz. So you see the bandwidth is increased as compared to this one. Uh, and uh, your gain is also a little bit lower. Uh, how much is the gain here? What about uh, we just right click and select the decibel on this plot also. So gain is like 33 dB, but that's uh, based on the parameters you choose. If you like uh, reduce the value of RC, the gain will be smaller and the DC bias point also because of the DC different DC bias point in both of the circuit gains are different. But this is the circuit that you can actually uh, implement. So it reduces the gain, but provides uh, your circuit, makes your circuit uh, immune towards the temperature variation and the bias point variation. The gain remains relatively constant as compared to this, because here the gain is minus GM times RC. So GM is intrinsic parameter of a transistor that varies with the uh, temperature and the bias details. So hope you understood the basics of uh, simulation of uh, doing the AC analysis on the transistor circuits. We will continue our discussion about maybe we'll introduce temperature analysis and all that. So thank you. Stay tuned for more update and uh, keep liking, do your comments and uh, tell more sections of the video, what kind of videos you would like to see.